Right, this is what you're about to make. It's a wood tipper wagon for 32 millimeter track at the moment. A fully working model. It comes with either binny buffers or my own design of buffer, which is a double height. This one is built using a metal wheel set. I'll take the chains off and you can see it operating. So release the chains. And then if we tip, so I'll tip it this way first of all, we can see the operation. And then if we come back and we can go the other way and come back and from on top. Same operation to the right and to the left. It's fitted with my standard ball races, which means it's very, very free running. I'll just turn it on its side. So it's got the detail of the rotation part. The underneath bracing, plank detail, and we've got axle box detail. And then we have the underside chassis. You can have it with plastic binny wheels and brass axles or modified AccuCraft Z3 wheels. Coupling centre height is 25 millimetres above rail head. I'll just do the overall sizes. The overall length of body is 130. Overall width of body is approximately 90. Inside depth is 37. Height from rail top is 92. Wheelbase is approximately 58. Overall length from coupling to coupling, end of coupling to end of coupling is 155. That's about all I can tell you. Please enjoy the build. I welcome any feedback, good or bad. Please enjoy. Right, this is going to be construction of the tipper wagon. To start off with, we've got to build up a small jig that allows us to build everything at 90 degrees. So the parts for the jig you're going to need is what's displayed in front of you now. There's one square with lots of square holes in it. Make sure they're all punched out. Two pieces, again, with sort of castellations and one lump at each end. They are identical. Again, make sure that all the bits are punched out. There's one there to be pushed out and two small ones again with castellation now it's important that this is put together dry run first of all and then we'll do it with some glue you can use a pva glue or you can use a super glue so let's do a dummy run first of all uh, best way to do this is to do the sides in first it's very obvious how it goes if you put the dirty side, you can see clean and dirty, dirty in and dirty side in, it will clip together quite easily. 
So if you do that, and then another one, as you can see, making up a box, hold that together, and then the other end, and the other end, and then you'll find that that will slot down onto the base plate there. So the best thing to do is glue in those first of all and then drop it down onto there. Again you've got a clean side and a dirty side. Best to come in from the dirty side as the holes have a very slight taper from when they're cut on the laser machine. So I won't push that in there now because I know it's going to be a very tight fit. So we'll do this piece first of all. I'm taking them apart. Put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. The first thing to do is just put some glue. We want too much. A bit on the tangs and push that in. Okay, make sure it's really pushed in. Clean off any excess glue. And make sure it really is pushed down firmly. And we do the same at the other end. Don't have to be a bit too neat with this one because it's only used once. Again, make sure it's really pushed down. Now we can drop this one on. Again, make sure all the castellations are facing the right way. And again, make sure it's really pushed down firmly. And then while the glue is still in a sort of fairly wet state, we're now going to glue that one onto there. So again, to do this, let's put a little dab between each joint. That'll be sufficient to hold it in. Move it around a little bit. And it really is important that this is not down firmly. In my case, it's just going to be a bit of wood off the end of the screwdriver. And make sure it really is pushed together. So you can now clean off any glue that's showing through on the outside. It's pushed in and it's really down. And we've also built this on a, a flat surface as well. So that's built the, the jig. So we can put that aside for five to ten minutes to allow that to dry. Um, while we're waiting for that to dry, we'll sort out the next parts we're going to use. So we're now going to construct the beginning of the top part. So we want effectively what is the base. And two ends. Now you'll notice the base has some what are called dirty holes compared to the clean side. So the first thing we have to do is to clean out these holes. A number of ways of doing it, or you can use a chopstick or a cocktail stick. So we'll run around the cocktail stick first of all. I would wear a mask while you're doing this because it is a bit dusty. But that's your choice. Make sure you clean right around the sides and in the middle.
these holes are in fact clearance holes for the underside foot rests or handle rests. So that, put that to one side. Now we have the ends. Now the ends come with it already engraved on both sides. Uh, but on one side where the actual uh, strapping goes, it's engraved a little bit deeper to help with the alignment of the strapping. So we have to clean that off. Now to clean that off in the kit, in the plastic parts, you will find, and I'm just looking for mine at the moment, two wedges, which I'll bring up to the camera so you can see them a bit clearer. There we go. And you'll see that one is a thick and a thin. And the next one down goes thin and even thinner. So we've got four sizes there. And the way they're used, if you take, first of all, the one which is the thicker one to start with, I'm going to hold you up to the camera so you can see. And if you use the, the thicker one and just run it as though you're using it like, like a chisel. It's just, just to clean off the dirty stuff and turn it round. It's just difficult you should do this on a flat surface. I'm just doing it so you can see what I'm doing. And again there. Just to get rid of the black scorched wood. So that uses that one. And then if you, on the big one, if you use the next size down, you'll find that's a nice fit in the middle there. So again, we do the same. We're not looking to dig down to Australia, just to take the dirty bit off. And then if you pick up the next one, this is the thinner pair, and you want the thicker end of the thinner, and you'll find that that's a nice fit in there. go and that does that piece. I'll now do this one down on the flat surface That's where it should be done. So again we start with the, the widest one We just run him up and turn him around and do the other side and that completes that pair. Now while we're here doing this mucky business it would pay to do the sides as well. So if you grab the sides, so there's the sides. Now these are a bit more difficult to do. Uh, what we'll do first of all is I'll show you and I'll point it out. Now on this one it's a similar idea. You've got to clean that off but you also see there's a quite a dirt, dirty burnt area in that position there. Now the reason that's there is first of all we'll clean this bit off and I'll show you what we do in that area. So you take the wide one again and again exactly the same push him up and I'll do this down here it's easier on a flat surface. Now go careful that when you're doing it you don't knock that lump off. So keep it pushed over here and just go careful up that end there and ditto that end and obviously there and there.
All right, we can move on to this uh, strange area here. Now, with a knife blade, what we've got to do is if you put a clean knife blade anyway, right. again, do it on a flat surface, but I'll do it here so you can see. Get it in the light. You need to drop your knife in and pull it along, and you'll start to open up a step. And do the same for this end. Just take your time, there's no rush. So that when you look on the end, I'll try and get it so you can see in the light. Now okay, you've got a step and a step. We do that this end. Again, it's much easier doing it on a flat surface. So I'll come down here. You're not looking to, again, go all the way down. It sort of self-regulates its height. And what this extra groove is for is to help with the hinge system to engage it and give somewhere for it to glue onto. So that's that one and then of course we've now got to take the inner out so again take the smaller one and i can't remember which one it is and it's the very smallest one again run that up And that completes that piece. Now you repeat that exactly on the other side. Right, so we can now put the two scrapers to one side and we can move on to the next part of construction. Hopefully this now is dry. So what we need to take now is the two ends and the top. Again this can go on either way so it's important we get it around the right way. So just lay him on top there and it will sit on those two legs there with the dirty big holes facing up. Then take one end and you want big engraving facing out and just sit him on the end there as I've done there. And then this piece will then drop on like that. And then you do exactly the same the other end. And by pushing the bottom, the sides in and the top down, it will fit onto the jig. And then just make sure that it's flush. I'll just show you along those sides there. So that's a, a dummy run of how it's going to go. Now for this, I do use super glue, which I will now get ready. Just put an elastic band to pull it all together. So I put it round the ends And set it so that it's just slightly proud all the way around. And then we make sure the top is firmly pushed down and the lugs are engaged. Right, now then, the, it may look as though it's wrong, but it's not. If we look at this end, it will be this surface here will be flush with that surface. That one and that one will be flush, but you'll find there's a little kick there. And that lines up with the part we've just cleaned off. And you'll find the same there, there, and there. And there you'll see on the end again that that lines up with that one over there. So that is correct. So what we do is we push on our finger there and slide that up against it. 
I might just add a little bit of super glue to that area there. Hold it in firmly. We move to the middle section. Do exactly the same. Let that soak down in. Double check again, you're actually showing the right parts. We go to the very end. And again, we do the same. And then to the other end. Again, squeeze in, push down. You could use some PVA glue on this by coating both surfaces before you put it together. This is to me so much easier and quicker and better. Right, it's very important that that now is left for a good 20 minutes to make sure that the glue is dry. Otherwise you'll end up with a wonky wagon. So we put that to one side. Right, so I've left mine for about 20 minutes now. So now what you can do is by holding it in the middle just take the elastic band off carefully. And you should find that it will slide up. And you now have the basics of the wagon with the sides at 90 degrees. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the some of the strapping on. So to make sure that, again, everything is nice and square, we make sure that there's no material sticking up on there, none sticking up on there. And on the jig, make sure that that corner there is clear and clean, and that one there is clear and clean. So gently drop him back on. pushing down firmly and then take a side now these can go on the wrong way so it's important that it's facing out and you'll see that you have a big slot and a little slot big slot little slot the big slot goes towards in this case what we we'll call the top so that slots into there as you can see And again, on this one, we do exactly the same. The big slot goes there. Now then. What we're going to do now is use all of this to set up where we're actually going to put the strapping in. So we'll start off with finding the various bits of strapping. So we're going to do the side first of all. So that's one, two, three, four. So I'll just go and get those parts. And obviously we'll do the other side at the same time. Right, the parts you're looking for are four that are quite thick and four thin ones if you take a thick and a thin to make sure you've got the right ones and then take first of all the thin one if you slide it in you'll find that it fits left to right 
and top to bottom. And you'll find that's in all four locations and that side. Now to fix these in, it's got to be a super glue job. Again, this is a bit finicky. So what we do is I'm going to put an elastic band over the whole thing there. Right, we should tend to hold things in the right place. Right, so to do the, so that checks the small one and the thick one does exactly the same, but goes in down the end there. And again, it will fit in top and bottom. What you need to do though is the part that's on view is this end because that's the bottom of the wagon. So it's important that the part when it's put in is pushed up until it actually touches this piece and then flicking down in like I've done there. So I'll do the super glue first of all. So I'll get me now you want quite a bit of glue because the MDF here that we're about to stick to has got uh, its surface removed so it does tend to act a bit like a sponge. So we'll put some in. You can see where I'm putting it. Don't come up here because what we don't want to do is to glue it to this part. This is just to glue in the strapping. So we then push him to the top and flick him down. Now the material these straps are made from is a polymer based plastic, liquid polymer. It's not very strong, it's very brittle. It's not like your Airfix polystyrene type plastic. So if you do put lots of bends in it, it will break. Now some of them may have a slight bend in them. I mean, they're fairly straight, but some may have a slight curve in them. You, you can curve it so far, but if it does have a curve in it, when you come to glue it, you'll have to hold it top and bottom and then the super glue will pull it into position. So we'll do the next one along, which is a little one. And again, you don't want to put glue up the top because we'll glue it to the whole thing otherwise. So you've got to be very, very careful here. It doesn't want much because it is for show. And again, push to the top. All the way down. Squeeze them in. And do the next small one. I would recommend that you do a dry run first on these parts to make sure you've cleared out the slot. That's something I haven't done. Well, I will do now on this one. So again, make sure that goes in and fits. Now on these end ones, it's important you don't get any glue into this slot hair area here or here. So you just want a little bit in those locations because we need that slot open for the part that's part of the hinge.
I'm going to turn over and we do exactly the same on the other side. And there are tolerances when these are actually made or when I make them. So if you find that it's a little bit too long, then just run a bit of emery paper on the end of the plastic part just to remove a few thousand until it drops in nicely. But there shouldn't be any problems. I've got super glue all over my hand, not to worry. So now we can move on to do the ends. Now to do the ends, I'll just sort those out so you can see what parts we need. Right, so parts to sort out first of all is two of those. As you can see, they've got a slight kick in the end. And Four of those, again, which are identical. So we'll take one of the middle ones. I'll show you where that goes. Again, keeping it in the jig. This one goes in the middle and slides up until it touches the top there. And you'll find it does protrude down below. Now that is correct, so that's got to pick up on another part underneath. And then there'll be exactly another one, exactly the same, which we do the other end. And then we have the ones with the pin sticking out. Again, it's important you get these around the right way. The pin has to go up to the top. So the pin goes like that. And again, you should find it's flush at the bottom there and touching at the top and the pin should be at 90 degrees. You don't want it like that or like that. You want it dead square. And if you clean the slot out, then it will be dead square. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Just get myself a bit more glue. So I'll start off by doing one of the end ones. Again, remember, pin goes to the top, push him up as far as you go, he touches the jig, and then push him down in. Making sure again the pin is straight. And do the next one. Then we do a check. OK, 
Okay, pin to the top. Push them down. And now we do the middle bit. super glue that shouldn't be there so now we do the other end again we do a check all right now we can fit the end ones i'll just go and sort those out Right, the next ones to find are these. Now these are handed left and right, as you can see. No, right, they are. These are handed left and right, and they've got a little screw, which is a 1.6 millimeter socket head screw, and it takes a 1.5 millimeter Allen key. Now these will come with the screw already inserted, because I put it into the plastic while it's still in a semi-molten state to cut a thread into it so for the time being leave the little screws in there so you don't lose them now if we take a a pair such as that pair there and then take the end of the wagon and it should be fairly obvious which one goes where now they slide in under there and you can see they drop into that cutout down there. Obviously, you can't put the wrong one in. Well, I suppose you could, but obviously that's silly, and that's just not going to work. So again, we do a trial check. Now, it's important that when we glue this in, we only put glue up there. and not onto the side piece so we can come all the way up there and across there maybe beneficial to slide that one down out of the way that then gives you full access and you don't have to worry about getting glued down the side so i think that's probably the best way to do it so here we go. So put some glue like we did before. And across the bottom. And make sure we've got the right one. And again in push to the top and push them in firmly and make sure that it's at 90 degrees which it should be and we should be flush running up this side here again some nice firm pressure We should be able to then slide this one up and it's near enough touching all the way up. So now we can do the one on the other side. So again, slide him out the way. Do a, a dummy run. It fits in there. 
all the way to the top and the side can come up so that's going to work I'm sorry if I keep going out of camera shot, but I can't watch the camera and what I'm doing at the same time. So again, in we go, and it's important it's pushed over this way as well, as well as to the top. Right, this one is struggling a bit. There we go. Again, some firm pressure. These screws are to allow the actual chain to come down that locks it in place. Right, so we can now move the side up. We can move this side up. And it's a nice fit either side. So we then go to the other end and we do exactly the same. Again, slide up. it's caught now yep that's a good fit right at that point we can now take it off of the jig so we take an elastic band off be careful not to catch any of the plastic bits we can take the sides off And we can extract it off the jig. So that's now finished. So the jig can go to one side. As can the parts we've just made. So now we're going to move on to the chassis. So we'll put them to one side. And we'll start off building bits for the chassis. Right, to do the chassis, there's quite a few parts which I'll lay out and then I'll describe each one. Right, so these are all the parts for the chassis. So the first thing to do is, so you, if you look at those, those are the parts that you need to find, which is more or less all the parts now used up. Um, maybe one or two little pieces left over, which we'll come to in a moment. Right, so where do we start? Um, the first thing to do is to find the ones that are that shape with a hole in, but they look very similar to the other ones with a hole in. I'll just lift them up so you can see the difference. Let's bring it up so you can see what I'm looking at. I'll lay it on my hand. As you can see that We've got a small hole there and a small hole there. This one doesn't, and this one's got a little kick in it. So what we need to do is to find the ones with the small holes in, of which there will be two of those. So that's them there. And into those, we have to fit the bearings. And the bearings are just normal Ball race bearings. So take the one that has got the little tiny holes in, and with the dirty side facing up, drop the ball race in to the top. And it will be a, a sort of small, a tightish interference fit. And do the same on the other one. 
and then take the other side again make sure you've got the square hole dirty side facing up as you can see again just drop the ball race in do the same on that one make sure it's pushed down firmly and then take the piece that has got the little hook on the end of it again dirty side facing towards me and lay the one you've just done with the ball race on top of it and squeeze together and you'll find that the ball race slightly protrudes and joins the two together so then put that one down as you can see the ball race is slightly protruding so this is the one which had the holes in and you've now put the ball race in so you take the one that's got the hook and the holes round holes dirty side you put that on top and just push it together and the ball races will pull it together so the next job we're then going to do is to glue in the ball races and the way we do this is again make sure that they're pushed in firmly we're just going to run a fillet of super glue all the way around there that doesn't want much hopefully you can see what i'm doing So there we do that all the way around the outside. Then we do it on this one. And the uh, super glue will, via capillary action will wick down between the bearing. Right, put that to one side to dry and then repeat on this one. Give it a quick wipe off. Right, we put that to one side to dry. Right, so we can now begin to think about how we're going to put this together. So you need no need to find the axle set. And in my case, this one's going to be a metal one. That's your metal wheel set. They're more expensive. So you may in fact have in your kit a plastic set. They're pretty much the same. There's about a one millimeter difference in diameter at the tread point. Although they do look incredibly big, they're not, they're very similar. It only affects the coupling height by about half a millimeter. Uh, if you've gone for the metal route, then obviously you're going to be paying about £12 extra because that's what I'm charged for the metal wheels. They're very, very expensive compared to the Bini plastic ones. Right, so here we go then. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this as this is the first time I've done one using the video. But we'll give it a go. Um, what am I going to start with? We'll start by building the central box, I think let's see how that goes so the central box consists of this part which is the top of the box and it's got two sides and it's got some ends so let's uh, start off by putting the sides on I think so if you take this funny starry looking thing again it doesn't matter which way round we're going to use it and if you take one of the sides now I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see you can see what we're going to do that's going to go into there i hope that sort of made sense did it and then we take another side which is this one and we're going to do exactly the same you can see how it slots in like that and then we turn it round and we do exactly the same the other end. A 
Be careful with this because there's some uh, fairly thin parts here. But uh, as with any of my bottles, if you do break apart, just drop me an email and I'll send you one off. So that's that part in there. And then we can take the top. Now the top has got four indentations engraved out of it. That's for the pillars to support the tilting tipper part. So again, we've got to get this in around the right way. We don't want to put it that way. We want to put it so that we can actually see those parts. Uh, and you'll see it's logical where everything lines up with all the various bits and pieces. Just work your way along. Have to maneuver things in and out a bit to make it fit. Don't quite know why that one's not fitting at the end. There we go. Again, squeeze in all along. Make sure it's pushed down firmly. And that makes up a good box action. And take the one that's labelled the word top. That goes into the middle. And again, will fit solidly into there. Right, with it all squeezed in, at this point, I would tend to glue this into position. Again, using the good old super glue. I'm squeezing, pushing that piece in, top one down, and squeezing in. I'm going to run some super glue all around the inside there. Let's bring that up so you can see again. I'm going to run the super glue all around there with it squeezed in tight and on that side as well. Now if you're using a PVA wood glue then you would glue up these surfaces before you assemble. And down to the other end again, make sure it's squeezed in and pushed. And then make sure this piece at the back in the middle, sorry, is pushed in firmly and is squeezed in. And then sit that down, make sure it's down firmly, push in the middle, in the middle, don't push there or there because you'll break the part, as I did just now. So now we can move on to the next section, which again, squeezing in halfway along. I'm just going to put some super glue along those edges there on the inside. This is the, the main chassis part. We don't really want this coming apart. And again, the other end. And make sure that's firmly pushed down. Now we can add what I call the, the outriggers. Again, you'll find two of these, both identical. And they drop down with three slots. As you can see. Push down firmly. And you'll find it's flush at the bottom and flush on the ends. 
You can do that with the other one on the other side. Make sure they're squeezed in as well. Firmly push down so everything is flush along the bottom. And then we add these small pieces, which I'll hold up to you. We go, there's four of those. And they go, if you can see what I'm going to do, it goes over there. So you can see, I'll do one the other side. So again, goes over, slots down. This end. Slots down. And this one. It is easy to get them around the wrong way. You can put them on backwards, which I'm about to do. So make sure it does go around the right way. Now they should be flush on the bottom, as they are there. And flush on the ends. And just generally move it all around until it looks nice and square. And then when you're happy, we can add just a little bit of super glue. So I'm happy with that. Again, wood being a tolerance, you may find that it's not completely flush everywhere, but it will go if you push it. Make sure it does go into all the slots. There we are. So at that point, I'm now going to add uh, some super glue, which I've lost again. Let's just get some more out. And now I'm going to add it along that surface there. And that will wick down between the surfaces. And then come along and squeeze there. Just add a bit there. And on the other side. There and there, and then back up to this end again. And then use a bit of tissue. Wipe any excess off. We can add the next part, which are the cross braces. Two of these, again, you've got a dirty and a clean. You want to put the dirty away from you so you can't see it. And that will clip down over there. So push that down, make a nice fit. Do the same for the other end. That make a nice fit. And again, using the super glue, We want to go along there 
and up and along there. I'll do that on both sides. And in that corner, that corner, and the other end. On the bottom, can I put that to one side to dry? Well, before we do, we just finish off halfway along. Right, so we now leave that part to dry. Uh, when you come to finish the model, if you wish to add weight to it, it's in those areas there that you've got access to put some lead into if you want to, or some steel bars, whatever you want, you can glue in there to give it some ballast. Right, so put that to one side, allow that to dry. And when that's done, we can then move on to the next section which is fitting the end points that the coupling goes into. It's fairly straightforward where they go, straight up into there. That's just a straight glue job all the way around. So I'm going to put some uh, glue on the end of there. And then inside. Where it's going to touch. This wants to be a fairly good join because this is where the actual coupling pulls from. So you don't want it ripping out. So remove any excess. And I'm going to fit it on the inside with the belt and bracers. And along the bottom so it wicks up inside. And then we do exactly the same at the other end. Right, that's now ready to add the outriggers and everything else that goes with it. Right, so taking your chassis, we've got two halves there, which we made up earlier on, and two halves there made earlier on. So we're going to put it together first without the wheels, so you can see how it goes together. You'll see that out of this piece we had one that had three holes in it and the other one doesn't. All right, so that's the way it goes up. That's the way that goes up. So if that makes sense what I'm about to do, you'll see that each hole lines up with the pin. If I turn it over and we take the other one, again, both of them together with the flange facing in. So again, 
we offer him up. And just a gentle squeeze. And that's your basic chassis. So we have to do that now with the wheels. Now at this point you can either use super glue or you can use a white PVA to glue the parts together. Now we don't actually need these on the outside at the moment, so they can come off. So I'm going to build it with some PVA. So the first thing to do is to take one off and take the other one off. But we've got to put the wheels on at the same time. So I'm going to do this side first of all. So I'm going to put some PVA, which has decided it's not going to. So I'm going to put some on there and the pin. And then we lay set of wheels and we lay a set of wheels and then we offer up the front one put the wheels into the first axle into the bearing offer up the middle one which is not the easiest job to do and then the last set of wheels at the back go in And then squeeze together. So that's that side done. Now we can do the other side. As I say, I'm using PVA, but you can use a super glue. Again, make sure flange is facing in front one into the axle into the axle all right once he's in and down Make sure there's no glue on the outside. And uh, using a suitable stick, remove. Now at this point, I would recommend putting it onto a piece of track because you can still sort of twist and maneuver it a little bit so that it sits on the track and it's square and there's no wobble. And I would then leave that there on the track for maybe five, 10 minutes, just for the glue to settle. I'm still getting my glue off. It really is easier using super glue. I think that's the way I'm going to do it in future. But not everybody gets on with super glue. I don't particularly get on with Right. Now we can start to add the next section, which is the outer ones. Now these are the ones with the hooks on. Again, do it with the clean side facing out. They will automatically align with the bearings. For these, yes, I would use a PVA glue. I want a sparing amount, so I'm going to squeeze some out onto my board and then just going to put small amounts and we'll stick all this in in a minute. And then I use my finger to spread it around. I 
come to oiling the bearings in a moment. Right, and then drop the one with the hook on. It will align. And then squeeze all along. And if you've used just the right amount of glue, you shouldn't have too much showing through. Do the same underneath. And you could glue these two together before you put it on the side. But if you do, remember to leave the little hole spare where the pins from the chassis go through. And do the same on the other side. Then clean side out. Put it on the right way around. Push them down. Squeeze. There's any excess showing through on the inner bits, which there may be. Now's the time to clean it off. Right, now we put the final one on. Now this one doesn't have any means of aligning it, so it's up to you to get it right. But it will fit flush on the end, flush across the top and bottom, and flush on the end. And you will end up with, as you can see, the hook does protrude between the pair of them. So I'll just get some more glue out. I'll just try and unblock my tube. As you can see, this one doesn't take up the full amount on that one. So we really need to glue this part rather than the chassis. And again, we don't want an awful lot. Because this part is more for show and strength. So a few dabs in the extremities. And then, whoops, throw it on the floor or just spread it around the fingers a little bit. Again, I would actually recommend using a PVA for this because it gives you the ability to, to move it around a little bit until it's in the right position. Where super glue is a bit permanent. So once you're happy with that, take out another cocktail stick and just remove bits of glue that shouldn't be there. And then turn them over and do the other side. Again, just to check that it fits. Right, it uh, that completes the sides. Now it comes with two types of coupling, either the Binny standard coupling, which we all know and love. I also supply with it my single height um, 3D printed version. So you get two of each and you get two three link couplings. So standard way of fitting them through the hole, Nut and bolt on the inside, tighten it up, and that gives you a height of 25 millimeters from rail top to center of the buffer. Or you can fit this coupling, which will allow you to couple up to 
smaller wagons, some engines with a lower coupling point. Again, exactly the same. Drop him in, three mil nut on the end, tighten him up, and you'll find that the center point there. So if we put the pin in, the actual center point there is at about five to ten millimeters below that point there. That's the standard 25. So that's about, I don't know, 18. So it allows you to couple up to a, a, a lower down engine or maybe slate wagons on the back. So choice is yours. But that's a straightforward job to do, which I won't bother to go into details of doing. So I'll stick those to one side. I'd also advise not actually fitting them yet, um, as they will tend to get in the way of the next bit we're going to do. Right, now we're going to move on to the plastic part. Now, there's an awful lot of plastic parts, and a lot of the parts look very similar to one another. So it's important we go through this stage by stage, nice and slowly. So the first thing we're going to do is to get rid of the obvious parts. So there's the parts that go underneath the body itself, which is part of the footholes. So that's those two long ones, which we put to one side, and the four steps. So we're not going to need those for the moment, so we'll put those to one side. Now you notice that some of these are a bit like a banana. I can't do anything about it, it's the way they actually come off the bill plate. But they will flex and they will straighten up. If you run it under a bit of warm water and just stress it slightly, let it cool down, you'll find it will take on the new shape. You may also have to just take any burrs off. There may be like a flashing running down there and a flashing running down there. So you want a nice smooth surface there and a smooth surface there. The other way to do it is just to rub some sandpaper up and down it, which is what I've done on that one. But I haven't done it on that one. And you can see there's a, there's a bit of a bit of a ridge there. So you can either just run the nice blade down it to get rid of it. So that's gone from there. It's gone from there and again on that surface. just so that we end up with a couple of flat surfaces. But we're not going to need those for the moment. Right, you will notice that there are four pins, four pins, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins. So there's four with very thin heads. Then you've got four which are a bit longer with thick heads. Then you've got eight which have got thick heads. The actual diameter of each pin is the same. So what we'll start off with is taking the four pins with the very thin head. So we take one of those to start with, and then we take one of these, which you can see has got two holes. There we go, two holes and a lumpy bit at one end. And there's four of those. And we take the pin, which has got the thin head, and we push that through the centre hole so that it goes through the same side as the lump, as you can see I've done there. OK. Right, now we have to fix that in position with a bit of super glue. So if we pull him out slightly and then we take our super glue remember which side we're doing it on, the lumpy side and we take the smallest amount of super glue possible and just spread it on that surface there. 
and then drop the pin in and push him all the way and take a bit of tissue and remove any excess super glue. So we do that to all four of them. So that's the first one done. So we take the next pin again with the thin head. This piece. And again, with the lumpy bit there, that's the side we put it in for from. We make sure it fits. Take him out again. Tiny bit of super glue. Drop him in. Push him down firmly. Remove any excess again. And we do that on the next one. Lumpy bit. Check it goes in. Put the glue. Push him down. And the last one. Lumpy bit. Room to thin head. So that's those four made up. So we can put those to one side for the moment. And we move on to what's quite a difficult area. Now the reason that these particular parts here, I'll just take one of them. They consist of three parts. Of which you've got an end there. Bring it up so you can see it. Let's put it back together. Three parts. So you've got that part sits on there. And at this end, you've got that part which sits on there. Now it goes on the pin, as you can see. And also, it's got a cutout where my fingernail is, which goes up with the cutout there. So it can only go on one way. Now, the reason this is in three parts is because of the way I make these. They're made on a flat bed. As you can see, there's just no way that I can make that on a flat bed. Believe me, I've tried. So it comes as three parts to be glued together. Now the actual bit that goes on the end there, doesn't matter which way around it goes. Although well, you may find it fits on easier one way than the other again because the holes are slightly tapered. However, this end is handed. I'll just grab another one that goes the other way. So you can see the difference. That's the same way, so that's not different, is it? Right, that one is though. So as you can see, there is a left and a right. So if I just take that one off and take that one off, 
you can see that you can't you can't put the wrong one on the wrong hole it won't go so they slide down over the hole let's put that down a moment it's got to go all the way down until it's a firm fit and if you can see that I'll spin it around so you can see it all the way around so that's how that goes and the same on the other one it goes the other way and I'll just bring it up so load it onto the hold pushing down firmly use your fingernail to get in there there we go and that's what you should end up with and what you need to do now is to glue that in position there so again make sure it's pushed down firmly and then you that's better right so you go in on that edge there and then you want to go in just under there and then if you can where the pin comes through just a little dollop on there and then when you've done that just take a bit of tissue all right there we are and just remove any excess Once you've done that, you can then put the ring on the end. Do a dummy run again, make sure it fits on. And then do a dummy run again, make sure it fits on. Let me show you. There we go. So that fits on there nicely. Smallest amount of glue again. Offer him on, squeeze him down, and then just to make sure, a little dollop where the pins come through. And then a wipe off. That side isn't seen, so you needn't worry too much about it. Right, so we've got four of those to do. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Oh, but I'll do it from a distance down here. Right, next bit we're going to move on to is building the pivot points that the whole thing rotates on. Now, to do that, you're going to need four long ones. One, two, three, four. So that's four long pins, four bases, four tops. These are the ones with the square hole. I'll show you in more detail in a moment. and the other four which go with it which we won't use at the moment so we can then put aside those tiny ones with slots four long ones and four short ones right so how does this go together well, we start off by taking a square one and the first thing to check is that there's no flashing on it so just go around with the knife and remove any flashing that's shown. And if you take your chassis, 
these fit into that square there like that. There's a, there's a bit of leeway, so you can move it around a little bit. So once you've got the flashing off, just make sure it drops into that slot. Don't glue it in yet, though. So if you do that on all four of them, four. And the other four you're going to need are those with a square in. And the way they fit is the square literally goes into there as you can see I'm putting it there and then when you view down on top just make sure that it's not it counted you see you can see if I can get it right so you can turn it slightly because of the tolerance so when you glue it on just make sure that it's square and it's not like that or like that it's actually pushed down firmly so that's our dummy run so what we're going to now going to do is we can add some super glue to this part around that surface there and just in the square. So it's around there and in the square. Then we take our part, push them together, look down on top. Be fairly quick with this because the glue does go off and then keeps good pressure there. Oh, that's not bad. There's some tolerance in there, so it hasn't got to be 100%. Right, that's that one done. So move on to the next one. So again, we do a check, make sure it goes on there. If it's a bit tight, and just turn it and then it may be a good fit then so that one's okay so we do the same push down check it square keep a bit of pressure on it Number two done. Next one. Number three done. Number four done. Again, this is done in two parts because there's no way that I can actually make this building up from a flat plate because you've got an overhang on there. So that's number four done. Right, the next task we have to do is to make sure that everything slots together in case we've got to do a little bit of remedial work on it. So if you take your first one, then you take the part that has got four bolts on it, as you can see, and a hole through it. One of the parts we just made, and a long pin. So the first check is, does the long pin fit in there, which it does. So we put that down. And the next check is, does the pin fit in there? Which it does. But does it all go together? So if we then just slot that into there and hold that gently and then fraff around with the pin 
till it all lines up, which it does, and that then should rotate, which it does. Now we need to do that on all four as a double check that everything works. And they all seem to work. So we can now move on to the next section. So we don't glue those in yet. What we now have to do is to actually glue these onto the chassis itself. Now, the best way to do this is take them all apart again. So take all your pins out, because we now know that all works all right. And we need to glue these around the right way. So I'll bring it up so you can see. So they're glued. Does that make sense? So that it tilts that way. What you don't want to do is glue it in that way, because that's the wrong way. So when they're glued in, all the holes line up, running in line with the chassis. So I'm going to glue those in now. And for that, I'm going to use super glue again. Let's see what I'm going to do. Yep. So we put a dollop of glue there. Remember which way it's got to go. We put a dollop of glue on the base and we maneuver them around and just push. That's the first one. We do the second. A dollop of super glue on the wood. Dollop on the part itself. Remember which way around it's going to go. And give it a little shake as you push down. Give the glue time to settle. Obviously what you need to do is obviously make sure it's a good fit to start with. So it does drop into there. If it doesn't, if there's a high point, which there is on that one, just with the knife, just remove until it drops in there. Then glue in the middle, glue on there, make sure it's facing the right way. In we go. Push down. And the last one. Right, and all four are in there. You should be able to look through and eyeball through all the holes. Right, while well, we're on the chassis, we will now add in the pivots for the lower arms. But before we do that, we have to make sure that the pins fit. So we take one of the tiny ones with a little shoulder on each side and we take the where are we going to be going? the smaller or medium sized pin make sure it goes in and just almost flush where it comes out so that proves that pin's okay and we do that on the other four.
Then it's good. Don't glue them in yet. Shall we pick number three? That's okay. If any of them are really tight, now is the time to just run a small drill through or a needle nose file. So that's good. So that's those four. Now those pins pick up on just like sort of small crank here. So it's also useful at this point to make sure the pins go through the crank as well. So using the same pin that you put through there, just make sure it will go through the crank. Just check both ends. And you can do that on all four of them. So this is a, a check for when we come to fit these later on. So three. Four. Right, so now we can fit the inner pivot points. We check the pins fit and we check the crank fits. So where do these go? That's a very good point. Now, as you can see, there's like a recess, recess there. And this fits. And get my fingers to work into that recess just like that and that's a very straightforward job to do so what we do is we put some super glue into the base We don't want too much. We don't want it to go up the side, which is where I just put it. And then we drop him into there, push it up against there, and then push it down. And then we can do the other side. Again, we do a check. It fits, which it does. This time I won't use too much glue. That's better. And we push down. And we go to the other end. We do our check again that it fits in. And the other side that fits there. Put a glue there. Right, and then we just add a little bit just to make sure. So we add some down into there. And where are we? A little bit. Just run it along there. So that's along there. And into there. Into there, 
put some glue on the stick first and across the back one left to do there and there so leave that to dry and we move on to the next bit right so we've made sure the glue is thoroughly dried on these so we're now going to fit the cranks so you take double ended crank doesn't matter which way around it goes in you slot it in and then you add a pin from the front and sort of jiggle it around until the pin goes all the way in and the crank can move up and down now the next task is really really careful because what we don't want to do is to glue that part we want to just glue the pin in now the best way i found i want to so where are we we want to be able to keep that moving want the pin to stay in but we don't want glue so to, to get onto the moving bit so what i tend to do is a very small amount of super glue and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to touch the pin on the end literally that's it now that should hold the pin in the capillary action will take some of the glue in but not up to the arm so we're now going to do the next one on this side so in with the arm in with the pin jiggle it about right make sure the arm can still move and again holding the pin the teeniest weeniest bit of super glue you can get just touch i hope you haven't put too much on all right so that's looking good so we now go to the other end again drop the arm in pin in Teeniest, weeniest bit again. Oh, not that much. That's too much. Okay. Take some off. In with the pin. Yep, we're okay. I'll jiggle it about a bit. And the last one in. And the last pin. Ditto again. Smallest amount of super glue you can get. Or a big blob in my case just to hold the pin in right make sure they can still work unfortunately if you do end up gluing one in there's not a lot i can do to help you um you just have to cut the whole thing out or drill it out and maybe put a wire in there uh, right so that's looking good so we can put that to one side for the moment before we move on to the next bit right the next bit is to put the other half of the rotating hinge on now if you remember just dig out one of the bits we made before which is this part here if we turn it over if you remember we had two lugs sticking through well that lines up the two lugs on there so that that end will go over there and that end should go over there if it's a bit tight which it is in my case this is where we have a tolerance with wood what you may have to do is just open it up a little bit just with a knife just put a bit of a, a chamfer on it Just to help it in 
I'm not saying you'll have to do this, but uh, it's a possibility. Because we're looking at the tolerance of the wood, tolerance of the cut, how well I made the plastic bits, how well they went on the end. There's just too many ifs and buts. So he's on there. There we go. That's a nice fit. So that's how that will go. But we don't fit that at the moment. We at least now know it does fit though. So we can take that off. So the next job is to fit this part. Now I've tried various methods to make sure everything lines up. And the easiest way I come up with is to first of all fit the rotating bits. So that's one in and a long pin. Another one. And a long pin. And put the pin in from the other direction. It's just the way I am. It's up to you. We don't glue these in yet. So we've now got all my rotating blocks in there. Now if we then offer this up to the squares. Right, so they're all in now. When I get to there. How tight is it? That's okay. So I think what we've got to do is, is once you've got it in a position where it feels good, We need to glue that in that position so we put a little bit of pressure on it as I've got there. And I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue up into each one of those positions there while I gently hold it. I'll bring it up so you can see what I'm going to do. So I've got it in a position where it seems to want to rotate nicely. And I'm just going to add a bit of super glue into each one of those locations. One. Two. Three. Four. I'm just going to run it down the side as well. Try not to get any on the hinge. Right, we'll just gently hold that there a moment. Don't turn it up the other way because the super glue will then run down into the hinge. So we just give that a bit of time to wick in. I'm just gently holding it there, not putting any pressure on it at all. should be long enough. Yeah, that rotates quite nicely. So now without actually touching anything, we will now add a bit of glue on this side.
Right, I think I'm going to leave that now to make sure that thoroughly dries. You will note I haven't actually glued the pins in yet, as I don't want to do that quite yet. I'll do that as one of the last jobs. Right, now we're about to do the trickiest job of all, which is fitting all the moving bits on. So let's start off by fitting one of the sides. Now, when you put a side on, it wants the bigger cutout, which you've got there, towards the base. That's very important. And then you do the same with the one on the other side. So you want the biggest cutout towards the base. So gently hold that there. And then at one end, wrap an elastic band around. It hasn't got to be too tight. Just enough to hold it. And the ends should line up with the angle brackets that's already on there. So let's work at this end first of all. The first parts we've got to fit are, if you remember, we had that piece there with the pin and the lumpy bit there. Now that goes, and this is where this extra groove came in. So if you slide him forward a little bit, as I've done there, you'll see that that will go into there and hook underneath. And then with your finger held on there, if you come over here, you'll find that by pushing it out slightly against the elastic band, it will drop over that pin. There we go. And that goes all the way down as far as it would go. And then you can slide this part back until he's touching that part there. So we don't do anything yet. And then we take one of the angles, which is this one. You'll know if you've got the right one, because that will slot into there and up to there. If you pick the wrong one, you'll see that there's just no way that that's going to fit into there. So again, we look in. You'll see that that will slot into there. Gone underneath that one. And then we come up to here and we drop it down over the pin there. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we have to glue that part into there, that part into there, and we've got to be very careful up here because we have to glue, where are we, there we are, we have to glue that one to that one, so that's in there, but not on the pin. So we put just a touch in there, and that's enough to hold it. So that's what we'll now do. You'll notice there's probably a slight gap in there. Where are we there? You'll need that because as it rotates up, it will strike the top otherwise. So if I've done my maths right, that should all be perfect. So we'll do this one here first of all. So again, just the smallest, where are we, there we are. Drop a glue. That soaks down quite nicely. We'll reinforce this in a minute. But just for a moment. And then this one down here. Okay, whoops, make sure he's pushed in firmly. And 
is over the top there. So again, flex it a little bit. So again, smallest amount of glue. Where are we? There we go. So it soaks in on that side. And then the dodgy bit up here. So again, we keep pressure on it. So it's pushed down. We've just got to go in to there. It's such a small amount. And we'll worry about reinforcing that in a minute. And we just hope that it hasn't gone down into the pin. So that's that part. And if your nerves are up to it, we now go over and do exactly the same on the other side. So again, we take one of these with a pin and drop him in to there. And then we pull him against the elastic band a bit until he drops over there. It's gone in nicely. And we take another angled one, which hopefully we got the right one. Yep, yeah. make sure he slots in there, which he does, and fits over the pin there, which he does. So again, keeping pressure everywhere. We do the gluing to the side door first. And the top one. Sorry, I keep moving it away from the camera. I don't mean to. Right, and then we move on to the the dodgy bit, as I call it. which is the smallest amount in there. Right, so now we can move down to the other end. Try not to move anything. Oh. Right, that end's still intact. Right, now we come down to this end. So we do exactly the same. We take an arm with a pin, load it in, give it a good push, maybe a small gap there, and then pull out slightly against the elastic band. And we take another angled one, but the correct one. And we take him in. Right, there it goes. And then up to the hole. So that's gone in nicely. Oops, so push that down a little bit. Top one's come out. 
Oh, that looks good. So we can super glue that in. Move over to the pin, which is the frightening bit. Smallest amount. The fingers crossed. And then we move to the next one. Where we drop him into there again. And again, just ease him out against the elastic band. And then the diagonal. It's pushed in firmly. All right, of you again, sorry. And then up to the pin. Right, we now leave that a good 10 minutes to thoroughly dry. Right, when you're sure it's dry, now is the time to remove the elastic band. But you need to do this carefully because you don't want to snag any bits. Right, okay, that's a good start. And if you hold it finger and thumb as I've got there, the theory is that it will open and shut. And ditto this side, if you've done it right. If it's a bit tight, try and work out if something see No, it's okay. So that one's a bit tight coming down somewhere. Don't know where it's catching. And it's catching on the end there. All right. This one's got a bit of play. So what we'll do is we'll take him off the pins and we can now tweak this a little bit. So just flex him in a little bit. So it's better to have it in than out. Again, a bit of hot water will sort this out. So just flex him in a bit. Right, now we can beef up this joint a little bit. So we can add just a bit on the inside now, because we're not too fussed now, because there's no pin in there at the moment. So we can get away with adding quite a bit of glue. Obviously, remember, do not put this back on for the moment in case any glue's gone through to the hole. 
Right, so put that one to one side. Let's see how this one's. This one's, what's this one doing? This one's also catching. It's catching on that face there. So let's uh, just take that off a bit of the file. That's better. I'm going to do the same with this end. <laughs> yeah, that's quite nice, that one. So you've got, you've got to put a bit of work into it to make it work right. Just going to do a little bit more. Well, take the pin off now that end. Right. Right, while we're here, we'll do this end as well. Right, let's put this one back on now. Yeah, let's, let's tighten the pins up a little bit now. Right. Right, so we have that one works. That one works. Quite pleased with that. Right, so let's take one off first of all. Remember which one goes where. So we've now got to strengthen this up. So what we have to do now is to add some more glue in around that area there. Because we only just tacked it in from the outside, if you remember. More on the ends. Obviously, once you've done this, don't put it back on yet. Now, with this one, did I do the extra bit? I don't know if I did. I don't forget. Yeah, I did. Don't forget you've got to do some on the insides. Right, that's soaking in nicely. So I don't want to get confused here. So that's that side. And I'm going to take this one off now. Keep that that way, then I know this is this side. Now this one I've got to do a little bit more on the inside there. And a bit more on the inside there. Not that much there. Right.
Right, so we now leave that to dry. Okay, let's give them a bit of a tweak in. As I said, a bit of hot water and uh, hold that over the steam. And you probably just tweak it in a little bit if it's uh, sticking out and misses off the pins. Right, okay. So while we're waiting for those to dry, so I'll put them up there and I will mark a little arrow in there so I know that that's that way. Right, so let's turn this one over. Now we're going to fit the handles and the straight bits underneath. Now these are obviously a little bit bent, but I think it's obvious how it goes. You drop the handles through the big holes. As I've done there. And then where the handles protrude through, picks up on the holes in the chassis. Like that. That's the theory. But, uh, I don't know why that didn't want to go in there. Oh, there we go. So that fits into there. And the end one fits like that. So what's important, because the thing's a bit like a banana, you really need to just tweak it a little bit. Just a little bit of warm air on it so it more or less looks straight. And then we've got to glue that. So it runs parallel along there and lines up with the holes. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know why that doesn't always want to fit in there. Right, so he's definitely in there. So I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to put that one in. So he's definitely in. And then line it up on the outside. Right, okay, that's looking sort of all right. So I'm pushing down on the handles. I'm lining that up there. So I'm going to add a bit of super glue under there now. Because that's level on the outside. So again, nobody sees this. I hope not anyway. Right. So I'll keep the pressure there. So that's glued that part in. So now we can glue the ends in. So what I'm going to do here is, again, keeping the handle pushed down. I'm going to add a bit of glue there. And then we're going to add a dollop in there. A dollop in there. Just a little bit either side. So it's not a handle, is it? I think it's what they put their feet on. I don't know. Well, it's that one done. And then we go to the other end. Again, put the handle in. Make sure he's pushed down and everything's square. Add a bit of glue there. And then 
a couple of dollars, one there, one there. Need the handle, footrest, step. Yeah, that looks all right, I suppose. Good enough. Let's do the one on the other side. Let's see if we can do this any better. So we get it more straight. Yeah, it's a shame that's curved. Okay, so let's do the same process. Handle, a step, step, middle pulled out slightly. It's because it's such a long piece. It bows very easily. Yeah, this one's a bit straighter. Right, down to the handle end. Dollops. Yeah, this one's straighter. Right, that's the underside frame done. Oh, that came out right actually. Quite pleased with that. Okay. Beginning to take shape. So I think I can now move these back on. Now then, before we put these on, we have to insert the crank part. Now the way this works, we turn it up on end, the actual crank oh, doesn't go like that, no. Right, the actual crank goes up under there and over that pin, like that. That sort of makes sense. And then we get on the other end and we put another crank in. So it's up under, over the pin, and you've got to bend this one a little bit to get it all in. And then up over the pin. And then that should drop down. I think it's, yeah, it's catching, it's catching on those bits there. All right, we'll cross that bridge and we come to it. Let's do the other side. Again, over, offer the crank, up under, turn them over, do the same thing, crank up under, over, and over the pin.
think will be better. That one's a bit tight. So I would just give him a little bit more help. Do the same this end. Getting close. Right, so now we take the chassis and we gently lower it over. Now we know this fits because we tried it before. So we drop him down on and make sure it can rotate, which it can. So really now is the time we actually glue that to that part. So I'm going to use a super glue to do this. I'm going to run all the way along there, all the way back again. And we offer them up. And just push down. So that's now fixed. Those two together. Is that the clue set? So we've now got a unit that rotates. So now we have to connect up the rest of the linkage. As you can see, we have four long pins left over. And I think it's fairly obvious where the pins go, except that we want to put them that way. So put it through the little crank at the bottom then into the one that goes up. We do the same on this side. And then if we gently turn them over, We do the same this side. I'll drop the pin in my case. Now, because I didn't glue the pins in for the rotating bit, Two of them have dropped out. Now they are there. So I'll just drop those back in. And we'll come to gluing all those in in a minute. Now then, have we done it right? So there's our wagon. In theory, if we rotate it, it opens and opens. 
So I need to hold that up so you can see that on the camera. Right, so I'm on the camera there. So as I rotate, obviously gravity will push that back. And we rotate, there we go. Right, so that seems to work all right. So now is the time, I think, to glue the pins in. So we'll start off with the rotational pins. That's the ones that are up inside. And what we'll do is we'll add to the ends of the pins. There we are, that's easier to see, isn't it? Make sure the pin's pushed in firmly. And I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny drop just there. Hardly anything. Same as we did before. So it just wants enough just to, to lock it off. But not enough to go all the way through. Well, that's that one done. We need to make sure the pin is firmly pushed through. That one done. And then we do the other two the other side. Yeah, that's a bit too much. I don't want to put that much on. Right, having done those, we then have to do the rotational ones, which are these here. So again, make sure the pin is pushed firmly up. And then just a dab. Make sure he's in. And we do the same with this one over here. Then make sure the pin's firmly up. And do the other end. Then make sure the pin is pushed firmly up. And the last one over here. Okay, so that's that locked off solid now. Yep. Right, now it's time to move on and do the chains that tie down each side. The first thing to do is to remove the screws that are already fitted. These screws will in fact hold the chain. So you need a 1.5 millimeter Allen key and uh, just undo the screws. It's quite a soft plastic, so go careful. The screws are already in there because it cuts a thread while the plastic is still soft before it cures. If you want some other screws, they're in fact a 1.6 millimeter 
socket head screw. Also, you'll find four chains. I've already fitted uh, a couple at that end. So there's four chains and they're 14 links long. And you'll also find some joining rings, which I'll show you. So there's your joining ring. And the first thing to do is to open up that ring. So if you twist it sideways, you can see I've opened it. And then drop in the chain at one end. And then just bend it back over. So do that on all four of them. I'll just do the second one. So open it up into the link. Wait for it to come into focus. So you do four of those. And then you take the screws you took out, which are four millimeters long. And on the end that doesn't have the ring, insert the screw into the last link. You have to screw it in because it's a tight fit. So you end up with that. So you then screw that into where it came out from. Or not. Well, I'll have to do this down at this level because I'm having troubles holding it and turning it at the same time. In fact, I'm having troubles down this end. Oh dear. It is a bit fiddly. There we go. Fairly basic stuff, this. Screw it in until it doesn't quite clamp it. That's about there. Let me do exactly the same on the other side. Which I've now done. And the way these work is the loop at the bottom just hooks over the hook there. And the same on this side. And that then locks it in position. That it can't open. Obviously, there'd be gravity there, difficult to try and do. So, yeah. And I've already done the other end, the other side. Unfortunately, they do have a tendency to unhook themselves. The change I've made from this one to the one that you'll have is this particular hook here. I'll put my hand under it and so bring it into focus. There we are. I've in fact made it deeper and longer so the chain should stay on there. Right, that completes that part. Next stage is to fit the axle boxes.
and there's four of those they're very straightforward to fit but before we do that we've got to oil up the bearings now, i don't actually have my oiler to hand as i taken it away somewhere and i can't remember where i've put it so what we're going to do is i'll just get some oil So the first thing we have to do is to oil up the bearings. Now where we're going to put the oil is, you can actually see it goes into there, just a small amount where the balls are. Any oil will do, a 3-in-1 or a, a car type oil. And do that on... Both sides. And turn them over and do the other side. Right, so that's them oiled up. We can now fit the actual box covers, or the bearing covers, which are the axle boxes. That's a straightforward job. Again, uh, a little bit of super glue. You actually clip in and drop into that location there. So, with a small amount of super glue. I'll just uh, sort out. That's gone a bit, uh, a bit off my glue for a moment. Just add a bit more. Right, where we're going to put it is just a little bit there. Uh, sorry, a little bit there, a little bit there. Make sure you put the axle box in up the right way with the spring towards the top. And literally just squeeze it in. Make sure it's flush all round. We can add the next one. Oops, a bit too much glue there, not to worry. Again, same principle, in at the top, and just squeeze them down. And it's such a tight fit, you can probably get away without any glue at all. But, uh, turn over, and we do the other side. Try not to get any on the bearing. Oh, it's that bit done. Right, well, at that point, you have a finished wagon. Well, as you can see, I've gone ahead and fitted my couplings. And you can see underneath, if I get the light right, there's a, a nut and bolt in there. Uh, there's nothing else to add, really. Right, there is one change 
and that is that due to the tolerances of the plastic, the wood, and everything else that goes with it, you can see that what should happen is it should ride on that one and that one, which would stop the rocking motion. So I hold the actual chassis still. You can see there's a rock. So what you can do to overcome that is, is to insert a very small piece of shim uh, or a piece of paper, a piece of card under there and ditto under there and blend it in with the woodwork. So in my case, I'm probably looking at about half a millimetre each side. And then at this end, again, it's about half a millimetre. It's because the thickness of the wood, how far that gets sat down in when I engrave it out, how deep that one goes into that one, how long these are when they come out of the machine. There's an awful lot of variables um, of which I can't take care of them all. So to stop it rocking, as I say, just add a little bit of packing either side. Right, I've in fact just now fitted some packers so I can show you how I've done it. If you can see them there, catch it in the light, and one there, and over on the other side is one there, and one there. They're 6mm by 15mm long, in my case by 0.75 thick. And this does mean now, if I can get it right, that it now doesn't rock. It sits quite nicely on those packers. Makes it into quite a nice model. Um, and some improvements. As I say, I've changed the hooking arrangement so the chains don't drop off. That's about the only changes, really. Thank you very much.